now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 7.06 now on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here on a busy Wednesday morning. We continue to reflect on yesterday's extraordinary events in Baltimore and the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Uh, But also, as the morning develops, we're also going to focus back to various political issues and social issues. At 8.05, Mary Margaret Olihan was outside the Supreme Court yesterday as the justices took up an argument about the so-called abortion pill. Also, coming up in 30 minutes, we've got an eyewitness to the bridge collapse joining us, Giorgio Comninos. I'm Larry O'Connor. That there, right there, I see her. She's Julie Gunlock. Hello, Julie. Good Good to see you. Morning to you. Joining us now is a friend of the program, uh, fighting the good fight for Republicans in Annapolis as a delegate for Baltimore County, Kathy Shalega. Uh, today, though, uh, talk about fighting the good fight. You're just, uh, I'm sure, overseeing, uh, participating in and just giving hugs out and compassion to everyone affected by this bridge collapse. Good morning, Delegate Shalega. Good to talk with you. Good morning, Larry and Julie. Thanks for having me on. Well, uh, when you heard about this, when you woke up yesterday morning, or maybe they woke you up in the middle of the night, and uh, you knew the impact this was going to have on your community that you represent, what what was your first priority? What are you focusing on right now in the aftermath? Well, it, it certainly was surreal, wasn't it, Larry um, and Julie? It, the the video of that bridge mm-hmm. collapse just doesn't look real. It, yeah. it, it you yeah. almost like you're watching a movie when you see it and it's been devastating of course really sad that now we're in a rescue a recovery effort looking for the bodies of six people who have perished uh that's you know going to be really difficult for first responders today as they go through that i understand there are two vehicles in the water that they're going to recover as well and um you know then we'll of course be moving on to clearing the shipping lane Mm -hmm. and you know, in the meantime, it is just going to be a logistics travel nightmare for folks that live in the, in the surrounding area. All of us in Baltimore County on the east and north side, we have to cross the Patapsco River to go south. So that means either the Key Bridge um, is not available anymore, obviously. Then we have two tunnels, or you can drive all the way around the west side of the Beltway, which yeah. is a traffic nightmare when the traffic is just normal. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to be hard, plus the all the, the shipping traffic uh, mm-hmm. trucks are not permitted in the tunnels if they have hazardous materials. So, right. you know, the port is a, obviously economic engine for the state of Maryland, for our entire region. We have the highest number of specialized cargo coming into the port of Baltimore called roll-on, roll-off. They call it row row and um, it's cars, tractors, uh, things that you can roll on and off of a ship. Uh, you know, cars, we have the, the most Mercedes-Benz in the country, uh, just a uh, huge number of vehicles that come in and out of the Port of Baltimore. They're all going to be uh, going to Norfolk now probably or other ports until we can get the shipping lanes reopened. And then, of course, rebuilding that bridge, uh, you know, it, it's going to be just an all-hands-on-deck unprecedented effort to get that bridge rebuilt. So I'm thinking about people, you mentioned people needing to get around. I mean, there's commuters and now a major bridge is out. Um, Is there any possibility that a ferry service can be set up? Uh, What are the alternatives to, you know, or is there thoughts of a temporary bridge while a bigger bridge is being built? What are, you may, those conversations might not have started, but I'm just wondering if there are temporary relief for this missing bridge and all, all that comes with it, the travel hassle that comes with it. Yeah, Julie, I, I think um, for nobody's really addressed that. I don't, I really just don't think there's an alternative Mm. for the time being there. There is another bridge called the Hanover street bridge. That's downtown Baltimore that I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they put some of the truck traffic across that lower bridge. It's a, a smaller, uh, not as high bridge. I do look, uh, you know, in, in investigating, look to Minneapolis. They had a, a bridge collapse in 2007. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as long of a span of a bridge. But believe it or not, government worked together and got that bridge reopened in 14 months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and and, so we, we, and, and, that, and that wasn't you know, just about funding, by the way. Biden rushed out yesterday and said, well, we're going to pay for the bridge. OK, fine. Yeah. But but the way to get this built and fixed quickly is to get the government out of the way. And so that that we can incentivize private industry. This happened in California. You're right about the I-35W bridge in Minneapolis, but also when California, after the earthquake in the mid '90s, lost a couple of freeway overpasses, they got those things rebuilt in record time because the government got out of the way of the regular, you know, process and just put incentives in there for private contractors to get the job done. Is there any stomach for that kind of efficiency right now, delegate? Well, I think there there certainly is from, you know, my side of the aisle. Um, yeah. And I think what they need to do is work on these things simultaneously. You know, government is notoriously inefficient, and it can take decades to build a bridge like this. Yep. But that's because, you know, let's first do the environmental study. Now we're going to do a, you know, put it out for bid for design. Now right. we're going to do exactly. this. Now and then by the time they get to the end, they're like, oh, the environmental study expired. Let's go back and do that again. So that's how Minneapolis and these other projects have been done really efficiently is, uh, you know, they've said, let's do it all at once. Let's get mm-hmm. this done. And, and we have the, the structure that's there, um, you know, so I, they're not going to have to hopefully they can examine it, make sure it's safe, make sure it's stable and potentially use a lot of the old pilings and things from the old bridge. But, mm. you know, this is a deep canal, a uh, deep water port where one of the few uh, Panamax ships can come to Baltimore. So, yeah. you know, the, the, the dredge is like 100 feet. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to see this will certainly be a test of Governor Westmore, who all of us know wants to run for president. So, uh, you know, that could potentially work in our favor as <laughs> as he knows he better get get it going and get this bridge rebuilt. Uh, we're speaking with Maryland Delegate Kathy Shalega of Baltimore County. It, are you aware of where the investigation is headed right now? Unlike the collapse in Minneapolis uh, from the mid-2000s, uh, there's no investigation here into the structural problems or engineering problems. This isn't about the bridge. It's about the ship. What happened on that ship, and what did they do to try to prevent it from drifting into this pylon? Uh, do, are you aware of of where that stands right now? Do we have any answers about what happened on that ship? We did have a call yesterday with uh, all of the, you know, the NTSB. We had the, you know, federal partners, state partners, the governor, Department of Transportation. Everybody, you know, was on with lawmakers to brief us. And, you know, they were trying to put everybody's concerns about uh, terrorism or anything like that aside and say, you know, it just looks like, at this point, it it was a some kind of mechanical failure, but certainly we why, need to. Know why do that they do that in, in the same way that we shouldn't leap to conclusions, assuming it is terrorism? Why are they leaping to conclusions that it isn't? Why don't they just keep their mouth shut and let the investigation go forward? I, I'm with you, Larry. What they, <laughs> that's what we need to do because all of us, you know, we would not be normal if we didn't have some concerns right. about with all the things going on in the world today. Ships in the Chesapeake Bay are piloted by bay pilots. Uh, you know, you are not like not just nobody drives a ship up the Chesapeake Bay into the right. port. We have highly skilled bay pilots that board the ships that navigate them through the bay and up into the port and then back out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I feel very confident about the men and women that are Chesapeake Bay pilots. And they're going to today recover the black box on the ship and, of course, look at all of us have seen the video with the lights flickering. Yeah. Right. You know, what was going but on on that ship has and why crew, wasn't did, there a backup if you could power? Quickly, and, if you could quickly, uh, do you know who's conducting the investigation? This is, is this in the hands of the FBI now or is this uh, the state authorities? Yeah, FBI, NTSB. So the okay. federal partners have stepped in. And, and they're the ones to have, interview you know, the crew because you don't need the black. I mean, you need the black box, but you also want to interview the crew now while they're, you know, while they're still in our custody. Also, one other quickie. Um, it's a private company out of Singapore that owns this ship and runs this ship. Last I checked, private firms that own international cargo shipping operations, they're worth a lot of money. 
why is it immediately assumed that our government tax dollars should fund this whole thing? Shouldn't we first bankrupt this company who did this if they were negligent? Uh, absolutely. And I'm sure we're going to look at the insurance. You know, these, these shipping companies uh, are fully insured. They're not permitted to drive, you know, navigate our waters without being yeah. fully insured. So right. I feel the same way. You know, an insurance company in the shipping line are ultimately going to pay. But be, until, you know, yeah, let's I mean, not wrangle with with the insurance companies. All of us know what sure. happens. You know, that's never quit. Yeah, and, and of so course, I'm not... That, I don't want anyone to think that I, I believe that just this one company's assets will pay for this whole thing, but they should certainly put a dent in it so that it's not all on the taxpayers. Um, uh, uh, absolutely. They should pay for all of it, Larry. I mean, if, that's uh, why if, if you and if I have, have a car it, yeah. accident. Uh, exactly. You know, exactly. Car, it, we, our car insurance would pay. We'd pay the deductible. They would pay the rest of it. So, Delegate Kathy Shalega, not... she's been a busy woman there in Baltimore County and continues to be. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you and... so much. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers as you, you know we get through this. And please avoid the Baltimore Beltway. Yeah. For the foreseeable future. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. <laughs> it's seven seventeen. Let's get straight. WMAL's Free Speech Forum is back Sunday, June 2nd at the Birchmere. Details online now at WMAL.com slash Free Speech Forum. So that is why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next Vice President of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. A warrior mom. There you go. Nicole Shanahan, uh, she is the running mate for Robert F. Kennedy Jr., as you heard right there, her main claim to fame. As a tech lawyer, they keep describing her as a tech lawyer, a high-tech lawyer. Um, she was also married to the founder of Google. Yep. Until she wasn't. That yep. was kind of a high-profile divorce there. was there. a rumored affair with another tech mogul. Well, it, it, it appears, as the reaction to this selection comes forward, that um, Elon Musk once did a deep dive into Nicole Shanahan's abilities. Larry? What? I'm just saying he's got rave reviews about her, her <laughs> performance and her skills. And now she's uh, lined up to be the next vice president of the United States if Robert F. Kennedy Jr. should win his uh, <clears throat> hoped for election prospects here. I'm sorry. I distracted myself with that. Yeah. yeah among yeah. other things, she has used over the past several years cutting-edge technology, including AI, to calculate the catastrophic health consequences of toxins in our soil. Uh, I, you know, listen, I, I want to I want to talk about the politics here in a second. But I do. I, I almost feel like he picked her because he's just dying to see her debate Kamala Harris. Oh, right. He picked her because she's hot. Come she's on. She's kind of pretty. She's pretty if you like that sort of thing. Yeah, I suppose so. I didn't really notice. Uh, I think Elon Musk noticed. She's a nut, by the way. I mean, she's yeah, a total lefty nut. So that is people, the bottom line here. I yeah. loved all the shock of like these 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 rad conservatives who thought it was so cool to support RFK Jr. Who's like, wait a second, she's a lefty. He's a radical left wing nut job. He's a radical job. lefty who wants to who wants to kill fracking. He want, he's a total loon. I mean, he's a consp I, you want to talk right. about a conspiracy theorist? There you go. Yeah. And and so it's shocking to me that radical left wing Robert F Kennedy Jr. has picked a radical left wing <laughs> yeah. person to uh, be but, the running but, but mate. To be fair, not only is she hot, she's loaded, and he needs money. So well, very helpful. Here's Nicole how Shanahan. it's really going to affect this campaign. You're right; that's a big part of it. That she can open up her uh, purse and and write a check, and former Google money there that she's sitting on. Maybe even some Tesla money. Who knows what happened yeah, there? Yeah. Um, but here's the real problem. The two of them represent everything that your doctrinaire, left-wing, liberal, radical would embrace in an instant. Yeah. They, if, you, if you're a diehard doctrinaire Marxist in this country, the, the Kennedy-Shanahan uh, Shanahan ticket is perfect for you. And this is very, very bad news mm -hmm. for Joe Biden. Absolutely. Everybody who thought that this was going to be Aaron Rodgers or it was going to be somebody that appealed to the right or maybe sort of this middle way kind of. Thing. No, 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 no. 
This is a radical left-wing liberal ticket, Mm -hmm. and that is horrible news for the Biden campaign. Yes, absolutely. This is a very attractive alternative to Biden and Kamala. Oh, this will be back in the Reagan Carter. I was about to say remember, but neither of us do remember. But I've read about it. Uh, 1980, Reagan Carter. And there were a bunch of these, you know, um, sort of like never Trump Republicans today who thought that Ronald Reagan was a maniac. And oh, my gosh, why can't we get Howard Baker up there? Right. Exactly. And so John Anderson ran as an independent and it gave they got to dine out at cocktail parties. Well, you know, I voted for John Anderson. Mm. I voted for John Anderson. I that's what the liberals in Hollywood, right. in New York, in San Francisco. Well, I voted for Kennedy. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I hate both of them. I'm voting for Kennedy. And that's going to. Oh, it, well, it, it I'm may sorry. Not, but the, it's not going to hurt in California, but it will hurt in Wisconsin. It, and, it te- and one thing tells you that the Biden administration and Biden himself is very nervous about this. OK, it's the entire Kennedy clan going to the White House on St. Patrick's Day and posing with. You saw this photo, right? Mm, the entire mm-hmm. Kennedy clan. So, you know, there is this. This effort out there to convey to the American people and to people who might be voting saying, I'm going to vote for a Kennedy. That's the right. Kennedy family going, no, 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 no. We're on Biden's side. Right. If you really want to, if you love the Kennedys, you'll vote for Biden. Yes. Yikes. Um, meanwhile, I want more information about what Elon Musk knows about this woman. <laughs> because apparently, oh, there's a lot of secrets. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 737 on O'Connor and Company. It's America's Morning Show. Thanks for tuning in here on this busy Wednesday morning. Coming up at 8.05, we're going to check in with Mary Margaret Olihan, reporter for The Daily Signal, who was out in front of the Supreme Court yesterday as there were protests over arguments heard about the so-called abortion drug. We'll find out uh, what she learned, what she heard from the people there protesting and counter-protesting. I am Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Well, we were transfixed all morning long yesterday throughout the program as we saw the events unfold in Baltimore Harbor with that uh, unbelievable bridge collapse. And, of course, uh, we continue to have the families of those who are now presumed dead, the workers who fell to their death in the river as the recovery effort continues today for their remains. And we are now trying to put the pieces together and find out what happened and what it was like. And to help us in that is a witness to the event he actually lives uh, right near the bridge. He is Giorgio Comninos, a fellow Marylander, and he joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Giorgio. Sure thing. Thank you for having me, and good morning to you and to your listeners. Thank you. So were you uh, were you asleep when this happened, and you uh, woke up because you heard the sound, or what exactly happened at 1.30? Oh, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, around 1.30 a.m., um, I felt uh, a pretty violent rumble. Uh, it was almost like a low flying military jet was passing right over my house, mm. uh, or perhaps even an earthquake. I mean, the, 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 the house was shaking yeah. and it was a very unnerving experience. Um, so I, I took a look at my phone and sure enough, a few moments later, uh, I saw that, that the bridge, the key bridge, our key bridge was at the bottom of the river. And I just, we still can't believe it. Yeah, you, you live there in Dundalk. I mean, the Key Bridge is part of your view, I'm guessing, uh, and part of your, your daily. I, whenever you live near a landmark like that, almost every day you just you check on it, right? You take a look at it. There's my bridge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a bridge that, that connects us to the other side of the, of the city. I mean, we use yeah. it, uh, many of us use it on a daily basis, perhaps multiple times a day. And you know, I had just been on on that bridge uh, the day before. Mm. Uh, there's Annapolis is 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 across the bridge. DC is across bridge. Uh, the the local Costco is across the bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's it's just really, really, really sad. Have you ever seen anything like this? Any sort of accident involving a shipping? Uh, container ship or any other kind of boat or ship going under that bridge? Have you ever seen any collisions like this before? Well, I mean, there have been some uh, ship uh, incidents, but I mean, nothing of this scale. Uh, You know, yesterday morning, I I walked down 
uh, just a few blocks to, to get a better vantage point of, of the bridge collapse. And, uh, you know, just standing right there by the water where uh, active search and rescue, rescue missions were underway uh, to find and now to recover mm. the bodies of those who were lost it was mm-hmm. just completely surreal and something that, you know, was not pleasant to live through. You know, the community that you live in, Dundalk, is, it's very, it's sort of like, you know, salt of the earth kind of blue collar Marylanders, you know, what you think of a com- combination of industry manufacturing, maybe even a lot of uh, people who enjoy the water. Uh, when you see something like this happen, it's it's the kind of thing that can sort of bond your community together over over this loss. Is Have you already seen that happening in your neighborhood? That's exactly right. And uh, yesterday and today, uh, you know, everyone was out at uh, community centers, be it uh, the coffee shop, the local yeah. diner, uh, the local firehouse and police precinct. You know, people were, were going out, uh, checking on each other and looking for ways to, to help. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the really uh, tough uh, part is is you know the next days and weeks and and months ahead, right? Where you know we don't know when the port's going to reopen. And well, I was going to so ask you many- that. I mean, mm-hmm. you live so close to the port. Is the port part of your business? Part of your your home's uh, economic well being or other people who live around there? Uh, I would think that a lot of people who live in your neighborhood are, are there because they work at or rely on the port for their livelihood. Without question, without question, uh, over fifteen thousand people are directly uh, uh, employed at the port, but the entire local economy is dependent on that port. All the local businesses serve as port workers, and as as you know, this entire community was built uh, to to facilitate the lives of uh, of the. Port workers yeah, to serve the port workers back in the day. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like uh, on the waterfront. <laughs> and real That's quickly, exactly just right. on a on a personal basis, have you what what are you going to do now? Obviously, yeah. you had to use this bridge to get around. What right. are you what how does this impact you directly? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, we're going to have to uh, use the alternate routes. Yeah. Uh it's going to I've heard from so many people that the that the tunnels uh, we're completely backed up yesterday. It's going to cause mayhem in terms of, of course, traffic. Of course. But we're going to have to live through it. And Dundalk and Baltimore, we're, we're a very resilient community. Mm. And uh, we're going to get through this. We're going we're gonna to fight together to support each other. And, uh, you know, we, we appreciate everyone's uh, prayers. You lost the Colts, and you had to suffer through decades of the Orioles' hapless play, and that turns around. <laughs> now you get the Ravens winning Super Bowls, and you got the Orioles making the playoffs. So th- these things bounce oh, back, there man. There you go. <laughs> Listen to you. you I can go. I can That's... almost smell the old base spice off of your breath. There, you're you're obviously a Baltimore man. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We got to leave it there. It is seven forty four. I, I love my fellow Marylanders, man. I, I, I love Virginia. Don't get me wrong. And Virginians are great. But there's something about a Marylander. You, they just, yeah, yeah, you can't hurt me. You yeah. can't hurt me. Yeah. Get right back. The Senate race in Virginia is going to be an important one this year. That's why we focus so much on the candidates who are running for the Republican nomination. Uh, and it's time to focus a little bit on the man who is currently the senator that's up for reelection, Tim Kaine. Yesterday, boy, talk about tone deaf. Yesterday, he was asked by a local Fox 5 reporter about, uh, is that Fox 5? I'm sorry. So, uh, sorry, a CBS reporter uh, asked him about the border crisis. And here was his answer, Julie. Does that change your mind or what you guys are going to do moving forward, looking at kind of this illegal immigration and border crisis that we have going it's, on? I mean, it needs to. I, I wish I, if, if people, when they hear immigration, I think a lot of people, the first thing they think of is the border. The first thing we should think of is workforce. National security and border issues are really important. And some of the chaos at the border is because if you don't have a robust work visa program, then people who are desperate for opportunities come and they'll make an asylum claim instead. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Where where do we begin on this? 
Oh my God! I mean, the, you know, as you oh. see the images down at the border and the obvious breach of our national security and the implications there with 10 million in the last three years during the Biden administration, you hear. When they hear immigration, I think a lot of people, the first thing they think of is the border. The first thing we should think of is workforce. Wow. Wow. Here's, here comes our cheap labor so we can uh, get yeah. our cheap fruits and vegetables yeah. and the, 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 those people who clean our hotel rooms. But even more so, this idea, I mean, does he realize he's giving away the store here? That's exactly When he says, we don't have a good work visa program, so of course people are going to come here and claim asylum. Right. So in other words, they're lying. They're lying. They're lying, and and you know they're lying. And to do anything about it. And he's doing nothing about it. Also, he says it as if it it might happen. It's like, no, it's happening. Right. It's happening right now, and it can be solved through executive order. But he, what, he's admitting, everyone says we have a broken asylum. You know, it wouldn't be broken if people didn't come here and lie about it. Right. It's broken because it's inundated with people who we know don't have a legitimate claim for asylum. And Tim Kaine knows it, and but a, all he cares about is cheap labor. And he admits it's broken. He admits that people are coming here and lying. And it can be solved very quickly. We oh, don't no, need well, some immigration bill. His answer to that is, well, we could have passed. We had a How many executive we, orders did, did, did Biden, 40-something, right. oh, 50-something? Fifty something? I, I, every single Republican who wants the nomination should be using this as their ad. Yes. This, this, this gets, and, and, and he's smiling and, and preening, this moral oh, preening yep. that he does is so yep. infuriating as he facilitates a lie that is destroying communities in Virginia right now. And he, and he, well, you know, it's just because we need a workforce. And it's, we, I, I, it's, I cannot believe he said this out loud. Chaos at the border is because if you don't have a robust work visa program, then people who are desperate for opportunities come and they'll make an asylum claim instead. A fraudulent asylum claim. Yes. That you know about, that you're admitting you know about, and you're doing nothing to enforce the law. He's not demanding that the law that currently is on the books be enforced. Right. Well, these people are all breaking our asylum law, so we better change the law to accommodate all of their illegal activity. Right. That's right. his argument. That's his That's argument. That's your it's senator, astonishing. Virginia. It's a-